Hey people on YouTube, uh, this is Paul here, and uh, I finally figured out how to get like a wheel or any other kind of object, or in this case I just call it a roller, but any object that is under a, what do you call it, following a path, I figured out how to get the wheel to roll along the distance of a path. And so I got like this cone here, which takes the place of a car, following a path, and the wheel is the child object with the cone that follows the path. But to get it to roll, it takes a little bit of drivers because if you just try to assign this to roll based on transforms, it only works in one direction. So I had to go through a little convoluted way to figure out the length of this path and then use some simple math to uh, make it roll the correct number of times for the path. And basically what you have is pi times diameter to get the circumference. And this cube I have highlighted right now is a measurement of that circumference. And the diameter in this case happens to be 2. So this cube is actually a length of 2 pi. So that is the circumference. The thing about that is if I play this animation real quick, you will see that as the wheel rolls along, one full revolution of that wheel is its circumference. And handily enough, the way it is scripted to distance on the path now, that wheel will roll the correct number of times as it moves along a path. And the main thing why I did this is it doesn't matter what direction this path is going. As where if you use transforms, it's only good for the direction of that transform, which is, uh, it really puts a cramp on things. Now, how did I figure out the length of this path? That's an extra step that is a little bit convoluted because uh, basically what I did is I put a little object in an array to measure the distance. <laughs> Apparently, for some reason, Blender, at least not that I know of, I'm still a noob, so maybe there is a way to do it, but I could not figure out for the life of me how to get the length of this path you think there would be an internal property that would tell you this is how long the path is in Blender units, but nope, no, th no such thing. So, how did I do it? I did it with an array object. Where is it? And I put this array object on another layer, because leaving it up there tends to slow things down. So this array is just a cube set up for measuring, and if I go under the modifiers, I basically uh, set up this cube, which is one-tenth of a blender unit, to be s fit in the path based on, or an array to fit length, and then I set that to the curve. And basically what I did is I had to manually drag out the length on fit length till it matched up with the end of the curve. And I put it on another layer so it wouldn't bog things down because this array is had, has, uh, However many one-tenth cubes fill up 16.6 .6 blender units. And this is an approximate distance too, it isn't precise. And I tried to see if, if you set this value and you set it to fit curve, this value does not automatically update, you manually have to drag it out. And then move it to another layer or whatever. So that's how I got the length, is with an array object. Because for some stupid reason, there's no way to measure the length of the path directly, so it is the only way I know of to do it. Which is a, kind of a pain in the butt. They, sh they really should have an internal property that says this is how long the path is in Blender units. But nope, you gotta go through this convoluted way to do that. So, yeah, and a little array object. Uh, set it to the size of how much precision you want, which in my case is one tenth of a Blender unit on all sides. And then fit length and just keep dragging it till it fits your path. And in my case, I dropped it on another layer and used this to as a part of the drivers under the driver script. So let's go back to the other layer that has everything. And a driver script is on the roller in this case because this cone here only has a uh, follow path constraint. So really all it is is if I don't have this 
set as a child to the cone, this roller, it would stay in place and roll. So, to get the rolling wheel effect, it's all set up like... <laughs> well, I'm sure you can figure it out if you really want to do this. So, where do I put the driver at? The driver for the roller is on the X rotation. So, now let's go under animation. Already have that selected. And here's our driver, everything I already went to drivers and all that stuff. So, what did I do? What did I script here? I'm not exactly that great at it. Basically, I have path frame current, which will actually be, <coughs> pardon me, under the path properties. Which is path frame current is actually the evaluation time, but I figured that's always linked to the path. So the evaluation time is path frame current. If I go back to the roller again. Yeah, so evaluation time, that's the current frame for the path. The path length is that length I got from that cube array. <laughs> in this case, I named it measuring cube, but I already showed you that. It was on the other layer, that cube I already. Because apparently paths do not have their length as a property, which is kind of stupid, but if they do, it's not obvious, and I didn't know where to find it, so it wasn't easily documented or it's hidden away somewhere, but I couldn't find it. And then path frame total, which is actually the path duration. But if I go back to the path, that is the total frames right there. So if I go back to the roller again, math of this is the, the current path frame. Alright. And I had to do negative because otherwise it would spin the wrong way on the x axis. So it's the current path frame divided by the total number of frames times the path length. And originally I had like pi's in there, but then I realized that hey, the pi times diameter on each of those parts cancels out. <laughs> so it, I, it actually made the formula a little simpler. I did that in a previous video. I, I'll probably cross link it anyways. To, an idea what I thought up, but really it simplified down to this negative path frame current divided by total path frames times the path length. And so what this does is if you didn't have it multiplied by the path length, it would like rotate only once for the whole animation. So by multiplying it by the path length, I think that tells how many times it has to turn over. Something like that, or actually no, it would be path length current times, or divided by path frame total, and then that would be times 2 pi, would give you a full rotation, then 2 pi over path length. Well, anyway, the 2 pi part cancels out, so it's not needed. But yeah. Anyhow. <laughs> Go back to... The default, the only thing I haven't figured out yet is whether I should add a slip spin because sometimes on a car you'll have the wheel accelerate and slip or you'll have the brakes hit and it'll slide or spin, you know, basically to get that spin, but I didn't bother with that yet. But there you go, it rotates one full time and each time it rotates that's the circumference so it should match up. No slipping, no friction. Here you go.